I'm thrilled this morning to introduce our first speaker, Dr. Morida Julius. She is the commissioner of the, the Chicago Department of Public Health. She, and in her leadership, she planned a four year to assure health equity by addressing the social determinant of health. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Marida. Good morning. It's really an honor and a privilege to be here this morning to celebrate with Social Medicine Consortium. When David Ansel asked me if I would speak, I eagerly agreed. I have to start off with a confession, though, first, because when I was in medical school at the University of Illinois many years ago, there was a group called Physicians for Social Responsibility, and I was not a member. Um, I didn't really know what it was about, and I was so very focused on my classes and getting through without failing my tests and focused on my academics, I wasn't really thinking about how social medicine, what social medicine or social responsibility was as it related to medicine. But the past 20 years in public health have really opened my eyes, and I can't see uh, a more important group right now in this current environment, uh, and I really uh, laud your efforts and the work that you are all committed to doing. So thank you so much for the work that you're doing, and also thank you for being here in Chicago. Chicago is my home, and when I think about Chicago, and when I came back to Chicago after many years in training and working, I was really, this is what I envisioned in terms of what Chicago was, and I hope that for those of you who are outside, from outside of Chicago that you're able to enjoy the beautiful city because it is a beautiful city. However, after, shortly after arriving here in the city of Chicago, it became very clear to me that Chicago is not just that beautiful uh, skyline that many people celebrate. It is a community, it is a city of 70, 70, 77 communities, which are very, very diverse, but also very socially, socioeconomically, and racially and ethnically segregated. And this is not done by chance. And we all understand the redlining that impacted this distribution of our communities. And as we move forward with public health efforts, it has really become clear that we need to be cognizant of this, acknowledge this, and address these issues as we move forward. Uh, over the past two years, about two years ago, the health department launched an effort called Healthy Chicago 2.0. And I say launched the effort because it was a planning phase that took over 18 months. And in that process, what we did is we wanted to come up with a citywide health plan that would really help us move and improve public health overall. But we started off with looking at data to really inform where we, what we know about what the status of Chicago and also where we need to go. And so through our review of data and also engagement of our communities, we found that Chicago really has made some improvements in terms of health. People are living longer. Fewer people are diagnosed with HIV. Teen birth rates are down dramatically. Um, there's many, many efforts that have made a difference in terms of improving health overall. But as we delved in deeper, more deeply into our data, what we found was that despite the improvements that we've identified, there are many, many health disparities that still persist. So for example, African American youth are more, have asthma rates almost twice as high as um, uh, ca Caucasian youth. In addition, LGBTQ youth are three times more likely to commit suicide. And 28% of Hispanics are um, without health insurance. So despite the, the progress that was made with the Affordable Care Act, we still recognize that many people are uninsured and many people are not getting the services or the care that they need to live healthier lives. In terms of geography, we also recognize that even though people are living longer in every community in the city of Chicago and throughout the city, there are still very big disparities. And so what you see here is a map of uh, the central area of Chicago. Um, the green line, actually, we are sitting along the green line um, currently at Malcolm X College. What you can see here by geography is that in the loop, which is by the lake, um, the, the life expectancy is 85 years of age. But if you come out west and go a little farther beyond where we are right now, that life expectancy is 72 years. Or if you go south of the loop, you can see that in Washington Park, life expectancy is 69 years of age. And so it's become very clear to us and to many throughout the United States that when it comes to our health, 
our zip code really makes more of a difference than our genetic code. And our data only reconfirmed that information as far as we were moving forward with our planning efforts. So last year, just over a year ago, we launched our Healthy Chicago 2.0 plan, which was the culmination of all of this 18 months of planning and engagement with many partners, many of whom are sitting in this room. I locked, as I walked in this morning, I saw so many of you who participated in our planning process, and so thank you for your efforts. The plan itself was launched about a year ago, and I think there were some key elements of this plan that were very different than any other public health plan that the Chicago has actually issued. And so I wanted to just highlight some of those for you as we move in, in the next couple of minutes. I think many of you have seen this slide or various versions of this slide. Um, and I think that what this became, because of our acknowledgement that health has improved, but not in all communities or not for all populations in the city of Chicago, we really needed to focus our efforts with a health equity perspective and lens. And so our goal is really focusing on assuring that those individuals who have the greatest need get the most help. Unfortunately for the city of Chicago, in the state of Illinois, in the United States, public health resources are not growing and are not increasing. And so we really have to do the most with what we have. And so when we have limited resources, we really have to focus on those communities, those populations that have the greatest need. And so that was the overarching theme for us as we move forward with our Healthy Chicago 2.0 plan. But because health equity is such a critical element, and because when we think about health equity, we can't really address health equity without addressing some of the root causes of poor health, social determinants and structural determinants of health, we can't do this a work alone. And so public health, one of the three key tenets of our public health plan was to really partner extensively because we're not responsible for those root causes of poor health, solely responsible. We really need to align our efforts and use the information and the data that we have to really motivate our partners to acknowledge their role in improving health and health equity within the city of Chicago. So partnership was a key and critical element. Also, leveraging our data was a key and critical element. Public health has access to data that others do not have. And it really, our access, our data that we have really allows us to insert ourselves into discussions that might not happen otherwise. And so we really have to leverage that data. And then lastly, again, just focusing on the root causes. We recognize that unless we address the root causes of poor health, structural and social determinants of health, we will not move the needle on health. When you compare our life expectancy to other developed countries, you can see that our life expectancy is not good. When you compare the investments that other developed countries are making in terms of social services, they exceed us by so much. We are really, it's an embarrassment to see how the United States is performing. And so in order for us to move the needle on improving health, we really have to address these social factors. So these social factors are things that you've all contemplated for many years that I did not appreciate when I was a medical student but have come to appreciate over the past 20 years. And I think our focus really has been in partnership using our data to address discrimination, to dis dis address neighborhood safety, to address education, housing, transportation, all these factors. So we're, over the past year, we've been moving forward with many initiatives in these areas with partnerships uh, throughout the city. In terms of implementation, this is just year one. We're just ending year one, and later um, in May, we'll be celebrating our one-year anniversary in this wonderful facility itself. And I think there has been great progress that has made. We have, in addition to identifying root causes that need to be addressed, we also identified five health conditions that really have been, have a need to be addressed. And these things highlight the importance um, of the data and our partnerships. Um, violence was one of those issues. You can't come into Chicago, you can't be in Chicago without knowing and recognizing the problems that we're experiencing with violence. Child and adolescent health are other issues that were prioritized. Chronic diseases were prioritized. Infectious diseases were prioritized as well. And behavioral health issues were prioritized. So these were among the health issues that were prioritized in addition to these other priorities within the plan. But in order for us to make progress, what we do have done for each of these areas is we've identified key community partners who will help us lead these initiatives forward, recognizing that public health and government alone will not make progress without these other partners. So we acknowledge a couple of our partners who've been great, work, great partners with us through the planning and are also continuing to do our work together with us as we implement our plan. In addition to the 
200, so our plan is actually very extensive. Um, if you search Healthy Chicago 2.0 on the internet, you'll find the plan. It has uh, 30 goals, over 60 objectives, and 230 strategies within the plan. So we have our, our action teams that I discussed previously that are addressing these strategies, but in addition to that, we've identified some things that need to be addressed collectively. And so one of the things I wanted to mention to you all, which I think will be very relevant to your work, is the place-based initiatives. We have recognized in order for us to really make a difference and to improve the uh, health within the city of Chicago, there are certain communities who are hardest hit, who really need the most help. And so the Department of Public Health has actively engaged community development groups, LISC, IFF, Enterprise Community Partners, groups like that who have expertise in community development. We've also engaged our city partners, the city treasurer's office, the de development and planning group within the city, because they have funding opportunities that are directed and should be directed to communities at highest risk. And so we've been working very closely with them to make sure that those funding opportunities are really aligned and focused on those communities that have the greatest ne need from a health perspective, but also from a community development perspective, because these communities are the same. And so we are aligning our work with our city and government partners, in addition to our community partners that are already doing work in some of these communities to make sure that we're not stepping on each other's toes, that we're not doing redundant things, but they're also doing things that are complementary so that we're more effective. So for example, in the city of Chicago, um, in one of the many different things that we're doing to address uh, violence within the community is we've, the, ma the mayor has invested a significant amount of money in terms of a teen mentoring program, but they're very targeted efforts within 22 of the hardest hit communities in the city of Chicago. So what we at the Department of Public Health have done is really engage our other partners in Chicago Public Schools, Department of Family and Support Services, our community development groups to say, these are the 22 communities that have the greatest need. Let's make sure that we're really investing our resources, applying our interventions in these key communities so that we can really make a difference in these communities. Because one mentoring program alone will not do it by itself. We really need to coalesce our efforts and make sure we're working together in a coordinated way. So again, I, I just wanted to give you a brief sense of where we, a superficial sense of where we are in the city and how we're moving forward. We are in our infancy, in our toddlership form, a phase of life, because I think we're just beginning to address these social factors. And so we've made some progress, but we have a lot more work to do. But again, we can't do this work alone. And so we need to work with groups like yours to really make a difference in the city of Chicago. So thank you again for your ongoing efforts, your ongoing commitment, your presence here in the city of Chicago, and I look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you. Words wouldn't be enough to express our gratitude to Dr. Marisa. Thank you, Dr. Marida. Thank you, Thank you for speaking today. Thank you. <laughs>